hello thanks for joining me on, a, on another video now I've come to uh, some local woodland to uh, try and get some large format photographs today so I've been to this place a few times before and I've got some uh, potential compositions already lined up so I'm gonna see if I can find those compositions again and uh, set up some set up some photographs i'm not sure whether i'm going to go for color or black and white just yet but i have bought both both with me so we'll see uh, see what the scenes look like we've still got some some of the autumn leaves on the trees the higher the higher canopy have lost quite a lot of the leaves but the the sheltered areas have still got quite a lot of color on them so could be uh, could be good for some uh, nice images in colour. The weather today is uh, overcast and uh, cloudy so there's not uh, a huge amount of sunlight um, around which uh, it probably means that uh, the images I get are going to be, uh, uh, especially the colour ones, are going to be more of a painterly look but we'll see what we can do with the, uh, with the compositions when I uh, get to them and I'll make a decision on whether I'm going to be doing black and white or colour. But uh, I'll uh, carry on and see if I can find the, uh, the two locations that I've seen before and I'll uh, join you in a bit. <laughs> I've set my first composition up and uh, it's this uh, this tree that comes up and then sort of spears off at uh, 90 degrees which I think looks quite interesting and there's uh, it's covered in some quite vivid green moss as well so kind of focused in on that and this is going to be uh, this is going to be a color image I think Although I was actually framing it up using a framing app, which had got a, a Ilford FP4 emulation on it, and it looks quite good in black and white too. So I'll probably I'll probably make an image in both both of those. Uh, in terms of the the setup, because it's uh, quite busy and chaotic scene, I've uh, taken advantage of the very shallow depth of field of large format. So I've just I've just um, got the the actual tree itself in focus and uh, it falls off to a more soft look uh, behind so hopefully that will give me, me a bit of separation in the scene. So I will get on with metering for this scene which should be fairly fairly straightforward and I will bag a couple of shots of this and then we'll go and see what else we can find in this uh, in this clearing. I've got six film holders with me with a mix of Kodak Actar, Ilford FP4 Plus and Fomapan 100 but I was primarily targeting this one as a colour image but I captured it on Ilford FP4 while I was here. I took a metre reading from the carpet of Bracken since that was an approximate middle grey and the light was pretty flat anyway so it didn't need anything more complex than a single reading. The shutter speed was 1 15th of a second and the aperture was f5.6. So after finishing shooting that composition, I went to set the camera up for a shot of a tree sitting out on its own in the clearing. But I decided the image wasn't really going to work because it needed a few elements that were not present. The composition included some sky which wasn't very interesting and it lacked separation from the background. It would have been better with some mist or light rain. I decided to abandon it and move on.
The scene I decided to shoot next was one I'd found from a previous visit, a fallen tree trunk which was covered in vivid green moss. I've set the uh, camera up here against this uh, fallen tree and uh, it's covered in moss and it recedes into the <coughs> into the, uh, the background quite nicely. I'll just turn around. And it's going uh, through the composition from right to left. So I've employed a little bit of swing on the uh, front standard just to keep the uh, the plane of focus going uh, across the uh, across the tree trunk. That does mean that some of the other elements in the in the image are out of focus but what I can see on the ground glass looks uh, looks quite appealing so I'm gonna take this photo as my will be my third image I've taken a color and a black and white of the of the first composition um, I'm going to use I'm just going to stop the lens down a little bit for this to f5.6 so this um, just to make sure all the uh, all the the tree trunk is is as sharp as I can get it while at the same time keeping the uh, the background softer just uh, it'll just give the uh, the emphasis on the tree trunk and give a little bit of depth in the image so I'll uh, I'll meter for this and uh, take an image in color I'll probably do one in black and white as well uh, while I've got the uh, while I've got the film stock here so I'll do that and I'll uh, I'll be back to you in a bit. With a regular camera, front to back sharpness would be controlled with either a small aperture or focus stacking, or even a combination of both. With a large format camera, and if the scene is suitable, front to back sharpness can be achieved using camera movements of either the front or the rear standards to manipulate the plane of focus. This is most commonly done using front tilt, so the nearest and farthest objects on the horizontal plane are both in focus. This only works though when there are no vertical objects such as buildings or trees that occupy the whole height of the image. For this image I've used front swing to set the plane of focus across the tree trunk at the expense of focus across the image front to back. It's a bit on the experimental side but I'm all for experiments in photography that go against the established expectations. I could have just used f32 and no camera movements, but I was going for a unique look here. Let me know what you think of this image. Well, I'm just uh, packing my stuff up from the uh, the fallen tree image, and I've just found another composition, which is this. Uh, lovely scene of um, trees arching up and over uh, with more trees in the background and again I've used the technique of going for a really shallow depth of field on the uh, on this tree in the foreground that's arching over so I've got that uh, sharp in focus and I'm going to be using f5.6 again so that the uh, the focus recedes into the background and it all goes uh, soft because it's the only way with a, an image that's as busy as this to achieve any kind of separation. And this tree that's arching over is uh, is going to be my main subject with the um, with the yellow leaves sort of colouring the the whole image and the all the leaves that recede into the background are, are, are yellow as well. So I think this will look quite nice in contrast with the carpet of uh, brown leaves on the on the floor here. So. This is going to be another shot on Kodak Ektar 100. Uh, this this isn't going to work in black and white. I don't think so. I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to bother with the black and white one here. But uh, I'll do one in colour, and we'll uh, go from there.
so with three images in the bag and one more than I'd anticipated making, I dismantled the camera, packed it away and headed out of the woods. I haven't used this camera for quite a while so it was a bit of a learning process to reacquaint myself with the workflow and it was just as well that the weather and lighting conditions were static as that gave me time to take my time and get used to this very different photographic process again. That's me packed up and heading back out now. So I'll uh, get those uh, photographs developed and scanned, and we'll we'll see what we've got. And hopefully they'll uh, they'll have turned out okay. It's all uh, it's all a bit of a, an experimental journey with uh, with large format, large depth of field, and, and camera movement. So yeah, that's. Uh, that's all part of the journey. So with that, I will sign off for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up if you did. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll get notified when I uh, upload, upload new videos. So with that, thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.